there's a movie I think called The Great Breath, and it's by the person that did My Octopus Teacher. But in that movie, he follows, I believe, the San Bushmen and their ability to track through the desert. And excuse me if I got some of the details wrong here, but the tribe's level, the hunter's level and ability to listen to the patterns of the desert are look superhuman to him when he first comes. You know, he's like, it's all told through narration, but he recounts this experience through My Octopus Teacher And basically, he applies the same ideas to track an octopus underwater. And he's able to do that by looking at the signs and symptoms. Like all of a sudden, a flurry of information that is totally nonsensical suddenly gains context and meaning. So like a little like crustacean broken up, he realizes, oh, that's like a trout feeding or something. It gets incredibly detailed until he's able to finally track this octopus again. And when I watched that movie, that movie and also an experience I had in clinic, which is I was needling. And when I first started needling, I worked with several teachers outside of school and I was going to one of their programs and I was needling and I felt like, man, I cannot feel anything under the skin tissue. I mean, when I needle, it's like nothing. It's like a big blob and and it just feels like absolutely nothing. And then I saw this show on a lemur, I believe, who has a very long finger And what it does is it knocks on a tree and listens for weak spots in the wood. And then it will carve open this hole and stick this finger through this hole to get grubs. And then the big part of that moment in clinic when I was watching this video was it takes three to four years for that animal to get the level of sensitivity to be able to hear. And immediately a light bulb went off. I went, okay, wait a minute. So there is an ability to attune the body to a level of sophistication that's actually much more than we're giving credit for. And I believe probably that indigenous hunters working now would say, oh yeah, yeah, we know what you're talking about. Like we know the level of sensitivity you're talking about. And then you take that from very subtle signs all the way to if you've been around anyone who's dying, they have a color typically. They look sick. They look ashen, white, dark black. And the text, the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic is very clear. There's a several different lines where what it says is you should have your true complexion, your genuine complexion. So you should have the skin tone that you're given by your parents. You should not have a dominating color. The moment you see a dominating color, it's obviousness as if you walked 10 paces away is the line and you turned around and looked at the person. Meaning, and what, what I'm trying to paint a picture here is a level of sensitivity that is much higher than as a modern person that maybe we are aware of, but that a hunter or would be aware of. And then also sort of a obviousness to health that we've completely disregarded because of the disease and what they are. And they don't really mention a lot of these things. You'll get blue bloaters and pink puffers for emphysema and COPD. That's as much color as you get really, or gangrenous tissue like purple, you know, and there may be other examples, but it's seen in an isolated way that isn't a prodrome, a prefiguration of disease and illness. And so, yeah, that level of sensitivity, it becomes seemingly magical and people often explain it that way. But truly, it's just deep living within the the perceiving environment. I mean, you're just really attuned, basically. And just to wrap up that last thing, that's why I really wanted to touch the body because it's not just the sight they give you. They tell you, hey, if something's dry and thick and rigid, the person most likely has a fluid issue and an issue of motility and function inside of their blood. And you're literally, I feel it all day with patients, it's super thick in a certain area or the actual fat tissue underneath their skin is literally matted. And if you needle it, extracellular fluid just comes out, which that shouldn't happen really. I mean, it's okay a little bit, but literally along matted packs, What's happening there? Well, there's a thickening and a lack of motion of fluids. And so they wanted you to feel with your senses. They wanted you to see, hear, and touch. 